My name's Dave, I'm an alcoholic. Hi, and congratulations on your 29 years. That's wonderful. I'm working on mine. And uh, that's sure, your six years. I've seen you here for the last six years, off and on, and uh, you do a wonderful job cleaning up. You're always willing to uh, be of service, and that's really part of this program. Uh, Kevin asked me if, uh, if I could speak, and uh, I told him, sure. Uh, my life is wonderful today. I was an alcoholic for, I'm gonna be short and brief. I was an alcoholic for, I drank, uh, drank and used uh, for 39 years. The first 20 was in and out of the penitentiary. The last 21, I was downtown Skid Row sleeping in an alley. Uh, I didn't have any hope. I didn't have any life. I was just existing. Uh, life was just going around, uh, drinking, uh, sleeping on cardboard boxes. I ended up eating out of trash, uh, trash cans. I had, uh, was picking up cans. I didn't have no hope at all, <coughs> nothing. I had given up on myself. I was walking down the street. I wouldn't even take a bath, man. I smelled like a goat. And, uh, you know, it's pitiful, man. My socks would stand up by themselves. I used to wipe my ass with, with paper from the... And, uh, you know, a, a, a friend that came through Claire, uh, she gave me a card and she said, Dave, there's people in Santa Monica that will help you. Uh, and she gave me the card and left it there and she was gone. Uh, because she was an alcoholic, then she came over here to the Claire Foundation, and I came about, it took me about a year, I guess. I got tired, man. Everything, it wasn't working. It wasn't working. It was worse when it was rain. And I'm in a cardboard box, and I thought I was Superman or somebody until it started caving in. I didn't like to sl uh, sit, uh, sleep on the chairs right there at the rescue mission because, uh, you know, they wanted you to go in at 5.30, sit right after the dinner, and then you, no more in, no more out. You gotta stay in there. And you know, but for some reason, I thought something else was gonna happen in the evening, although usually by nine o'clock, you know, I'm looking for some cardboard to go crash out. Uh, so I came to Claire, I called up Claire, uh, right here on 9th and Pico, and um, like everybody else, we need a home to start from. I came there, I talked to him, and, uh, their question to me was very interesting because the, my, the person that interviewed me says, uh, what makes you think we can help you? You've been drinking for over 40 years, you know, you're 51 years old. What makes you think we can help you? And then I, you know, I told her, well, you know, I've made up my mind, you know, it's not working. So she said, okay, the, I, well, I was ignorant. I didn't know anything about AA, NACA, or any other kind of, she said, uh, Put you in detox, and then you're going to go to acting so you can familiarize yourself with the AA program. And then uh, we're going to, you're going to fill out the, the application here to come to the recovery house. And then, uh, you know, by that time you'll have four or five months, three or four months exposure and understand what the AA program is all about. And I did. I went to the detox for the seven days, and then they sent me to acting, and I was up there three months. And uh, we worked on the first three steps. Uh, the hardest thing, I think, was for me to understand that word powerlessness. I thought I still had power. I thought I still had control. But as I, I just finished telling you uh, in the beginning, I slid into clear on a garbage can lid. I, was, I weighed 118 pounds. My regular weight's 170. I weigh 175 right now. I was 51 years old, middle age, ex-con. You know, who's gonna hire me? I'm underweight, physically. I'm... So when I was at Claire, they, they uh, started, you know, they give you a, a bed, the three meals, and they start, you know, uh, you go to the bargain center and help them out there during the day and then just start living sober. And then they would bring us here. I got my newcomer chip here. Yeah, on Thursday nights. On Thursday nights, the van used to come here. And, uh, you know, just with, it, you know, with the program, there's another way of life, man. I started to realize that other men were doing it, and uh, men and women. And then uh, I got a sponsor, 
who's my best friend today. I've had him for quite a few years now. And uh, I was skeptical in the beginning because, you know, I thought I could still go out and get a drink. You know, I, I, I really didn't believe people could stay sober. And they come up here and say they haven't had a drink for a year. I said, yeah, all right. You know, see, because you can't imagine that. You can't see because you don't know. And then, uh, you know, I had to get a higher higher power. And I always thought God had abandoned, I was, I was raised Catholic, had abandoned me or I was a punishing God. And I had to make my uh, my peace with him. I wasn't acting when the earthquake hit in the morning at 4.15 and the bed started shaking. <laughs> Ooh, the first thing I popped up. The first thing that came to my mind was if I made peace with him, I felt this big. The whole thing, the, it hit hard up there in acting, man. The whole building, and was, they're like concert huts or whatever they are, the whole thing was moving. I said, oh my God. <laughs> and it, it, you know, the beds are jumping and everything's moving. But the thing that popped in my head was if I made my peace, because I knew I was born. You know that. <laughs> yeah, we're just part of this universe. And we're on a small part of it. And uh, today I know that AA is in just about all the countries in the world. And uh, the founding fathers they started a wonderful program here to help a lot of us, people like me and like you, uh, that have been battling alcoholism and a lot of times we don't understand. I used to drink, well I started drinking I guess when I was 12, drinking and smoking, that was, and um, I used to work doing, I used to work and then on Fridays it was just go get me my, my half pint of Hill and Hill or, and uh, you know, just start, I would start with a half a pint and then just, you know, from a pint. I mean, it was a three-day thing. Monday morning, I'm broke, back to work with my mouth all dry and nothing. <laughs> oh, man, it was ridiculous. Spent all my paycheck those three three days. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, man, it was like a drinking bridge. I came to Claire, and they, they uh, brought me to meetings, and I started to learn about the program. And they, they said I had, I had to get a job, so I walked over to Sears and got a part-time job, 25 hours a week, $4.90 in 1993. And I worked, I was already 51, 52, 51, I think. And I worked that little part-time job into a full-time, uh, I became one of the top salesmen in the hardware paint department, and I was a supervisor. My register was never uh, missing, any, not even a penny. Because what I needed from Sierra was just to go home with a clear conscience. I don't need their money. And I told that to the manager, and she said, Hallelujah, dude. <laughs> I said, I don't need money. I don't care if you got 52, you make $52 billion here a year. I said, I don't need a penny from you guys. What I need is, you know, to conduct my life, you know, and uh, go to bed with a clear conscience in the morning, go to open the doors, and good morning, Sears. <laughs> I mean, that type of philosophy. And, oh, they liked me over there, and I met a man there that was working refrigerators. He's not there anymore, but he had 16 years. And then there was a retired man that came back to work, here, and I was talking to him, and he says, you participated. Uh, in, oh, he, thought, he said, do you know Pete Wilson? I said, yeah. He said, well, I got 29 years. I said, well, can you shook his hand. I said, well, right on. And he said, I work the program, except I work it up in the valley. You know, I don't come. This is not my area. I work over there, and I'm just here part time. So we became friends, you know. So I, I, I know other men and women now. When I got hired, they told me it's up to you if you want to tell the rest of the people. We're not going to tell them that you because I told them I participated in the AA program and I came through the Clare Foundation, and they called over there. They checked, and um, then they had a restructuring about a year ago, and they wanted me to keep working for my 40 hours, they paid my medical insurance, my profit sharing and everything else, but they wanted me to work for a dollar thirty cents less an hour and I said no. I'm trained I'm supposed to go up. I'm not going back. I said I'm sixty one and a half, I can take my retirement. I said tomorrow's my last day. 
And all the time I was at Claire, they sent me to the state rehab right here on Ocean Park. Because in the penitentiary, a long time ago, I learned the upholstery trade, and they got me my tools. They gave me $125 to go get me clothes, because I was looking for work in upholstery, but Sears came up with a job, and my exit date was coming up, so I went to work at Sears. And part-time for uh, four evenings a week, I was at Venice High School, and I went to the upholstery class through Venice Skills Center to upgrade my upholstery skills. In the last seven years, I was a teacher's aide there. <laughs> I was teaching men and women how to do cutting and sewing and spring, everything. And uh, I had a wonderful teacher. He just passed away. He had 45 years in the trade. And uh, I told him I'd stay with you till you retire. You know, he worked till he was about 69 or 70. But what I got from him is all my connections around here, because he had a shop here in Los Angeles. I'm not from this area. I'm from Ventura Oxnard area. So where I could buy my foam and everything wholesale without a license use his name and I've already got those connections so when Sears wanted me to work for less I told him no I'm going to take my retirement and I did I said tomorrow's my last day I don't have any trouble dropping this and starting my own business so I walked away with uh, quite a few thousand dollars that we settled on and I got all that money and then just threw it right in and bought me all new machines uh, sewing machines staple guns button makers all kinds of upholstery specialty tools I'm stocked, which is good. That was a choice between that or a truck. I said, I better get this, the truck's gonna come in later. <laughs> so, I mean, all that is because of this program. In this program, uh, being of service is emphasized. When I was at Sears on the floor, I'm, work I'm dealing with people, I'm working with people, and I'm being of service. Yes, uh, how can I help you, ma'am? You know, answer the phone. Good evening, Sears Hardware. This is Dave. How may I help you? Even my manager was surprised. He said, no, that's part of. So I was able to, because of this program, see, because when I was in school, girl, I was an animal. I didn't care about anything. One time I got beat up for my welfare money, my food stamps, and they took $100 off of me, man. So, you know, I just wiped the blood off my face, and I just went and ripped off the next man. You know, keep it simple. <laughs> you know, it's, but see, that mentality is how to survive down there. You know, so my life has completely flipped over. Now I'm more compassion. I have more compassion for another human being. I can love people unconditionally. I love you guys. Because see, when I, in the beginning, when I pray, I said, help me, help me, help me, because I couldn't figure out the insanity up here. Five, six years later, you say, thank you. Every morning, I surrender, and I say, thank you. And then I say, gracias, in Spanish, just in case it's bilingual. I don't know. <laughs> I got to cover my bases. Now, that works for me. Whatever works for you, OK? And. Uh, I'm very happy with my 10 years. I've got 10 years in the program, and every day is a blessing. Every day is a special day. This program is about one day at a time. Well, every day is a special day to me. Uh, I've been retired now. Well, I took an early retirement. Uh, I'm 62, and uh, my life is a blessing, man, thanks to all of you guys. Uh, you know, they say that as you, you know, trudge, your road, that the road gets narrower. Well, it does, but you get, I, I'm more comfortable in myself, I'm more comfortable in my skin, I, you know, I can extend my hand out to the newcomer, and uh, I can show unconditional love to you guys because you guys have shown it to me. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I buried my dad about three months ago, and uh, a lot of you people called me up, a lot of you people stayed on the phone line, so, you know, I cried by myself, and you know, I, I went through some real hard feelings. And a lot of times, if you people, if a lot of you people that are new in the program, well, I'm gonna tell you, get ready, because life is gonna show up, and some real feelings are gonna come at you, and um, you know, you, you have to get ready to learn how to walk through them. 
you know, we can't run away. I can't run away. I can't hide. I have to use my phone numbers. I have to talk to my sponsor. I have to call a friend. You know, uh, it's a little sense of vulnerability there, but it's it's a good. It's it's life. It's real, man. You're human. We're human, man. You know, we're not animals. We're just human beings that have made a mistake, and or some, you know, and we've been alcoholics for so long. But there's a life here, man. But you have to. It comes from the inside. It doesn't come from the outside. You know, and uh, every morning I surrender and I just say thank you for today and let's go, take me. My self-will, you know, that that bad thing, you know, self-will will get you nowhere. I've enjoyed my 10 years, 10 years here and I'm looking for the rest of them. And, uh, you know, I want to thank all of you. Uh, in the beginning, it was help me when I was praying, and then afterwards, it was thank you. Now, what I pray for is that all of you stay in my life. Thank you. <laughs>